Well, hey, what's up, everybody? Michael here once again. Welcome to the YouTube channel for the documentary series about urbanism, the life-sized city. The race is on, people. All over the world, the race is on to become the first city to run out of water. This is not a race that we want or that we need, and none of the main competitors in this race want to be in the race. But at some point, unfortunately, in the near future, some city somewhere, some large city is going to run out of water. Back when we were filming the Cape Town episode of The Life Size City in season three, we arrived in the middle of a drought. Huge billboards at the airport in the hotel room, in the bathtub was covered saying you cannot use it, take short showers, do everything you can to save water because Cape Town had a D-Day. It was in April, it was a few months after we filmed there, and if nothing happened up until that point, the city would officially run out of water. What, like four million people? They were saved by the bell, unseasonable rain, hey, climate change is weird, right? Fell in the reservoir that feeds the city and they averted disaster. Other cities have been also very close. Today, we're going to Mexico City, a city that has struggled with water security for a very long time. It is a completely bizarre city regarding the way that they get their water and what they do with it. And just generally water <laughs> in Mexico City is absolutely bizarre. All will be explained in the segment you're about to see. And the guy you're about to see, he has done the math. He's done the legwork. He has fire in his belly. He knows how he can solve a very serious issue with, ooh, as I love it, a very simple solution. See the work that he's done, see if it's transferable to other places around the world, like so many of these ideas are in the life-size city. Man, it is amazing. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Let's go to Mexico City. <music> In this laboratory of the urban future, as Arelli puts it, one critical problem stands out, the water crisis. Now we'll all agree that water is a basic necessity, but cities around the world are running out of it, and Mexico City tops that unfortunate list. The problem here has taken on epic proportions. In the remote neighborhood of San Gregorio, one local initiative is tackling the greatest urban challenge in history. The more you look at the water situation in Mexico City, uh, the more shocking it is, and the more I think you realize that we have to do something and we have to do it now. Yeah. You know? Enrique co-founded Isla Urbana. He's been setting up rainwater harvesting systems throughout the city for about a decade. That's something like 7,000 of these low-tech but very efficient life changers. Mexico City has one of the more complex water problems in the world. First of all, it's very far away from any coast or from any body of water, and it's very high up. Now we're 2,200 meters above sea level here. In a valley, any water that you were potentially gonna bring into the city, uh, you'd have to pump entirely uphill and like across the Sierra, okay. which is virtually impossible. At least 250,000 people here aren't even connected to the grid. Millions more have scarce access to running water, sometimes just for a few hours a day. Many, mostly in poor areas, rely on water delivery trucks for their share of drinking water. But things haven't always been this way. The Aztecs actually had it all figured out long before the Spanish conquered them in 1521. Mexico City used to be a city of lakes. It was like the Venice of America. And the Aztec had a very, very sophisticated water management system. But the war with the Spanish destroyed everything. They somehow were determined to recreate Madrid. So they decided to drain the Valley of Mexico. So Mexico City is now a big, flat, concrete wilderness. But all of this land is very flood prone. And therein lies the irony in all of this. While Mexico City is running dry, it also receives an unbelievable amount of rain, making it extremely vulnerable to flooding. Picture this, 
During the rainy season, Mexico City gets one and a half times more rain than London does in an entire year. That's a lot of water. But it heads straight into the sewers. And that's not the only problem. Mexico City is on a very soft ground because it was a lake, so the city sinks very quickly. Parts of Mexico City today sink 40 centimeters a year. Really? Yeah, which is mind-boggling. And the aquifer, which is further down, which is what we depend on, is just very, very quickly getting depleted. So 50 years ago, wells in Mexico City were 30 or 40 meters deep. Today, they're three or 400 meters deep. And the newest generation of wells are 2,000 meters deep. In order to try to mitigate this, we started pumping water into the city from outside. We built this massive system, which starts in Michoacan, about 150 kilometers away, and pumps water 1.1 kilometers uphill. Pumps from one dam to another dam to another dam to another dam, and then finally makes it over the mountains in the west of the city and puts the water Gravity into the grid. Works. It's insane. It's one of the most energy intensive water systems in the world. So the grid is wrecked, and there's maybe 40 to 50% of the water that gets put into the grid is lost in leaks. Today, it's Lauro's turn. Living on the outskirts of this mega city, he and his family have been collecting rainwater with what they have an old washing machine and a tarp. That's because they have access to the grid for only two short hours a day. ¿Y en su casa cómo ha sido su, su historia con el agua? Ah, bueno. Sabemos que el agua se está agotando. Esto ha hecho que nosotros tengamos que racionalizar nuestra agua. En las duchas que tenemos en los baños uh -huh. son duchas ahorradoras del tamaño de una cucharolatita, muy pequeñas porque sabemos que le hace falta a nuestros sí. a nuestros hermanos. Y qué bueno que ahora eh, Isla Urbana está haciendo esto. Si es necesario este, hablar con los vecinos, pues los vamos a traer también para que vean esta tecnología y para que se inscriban en el gobierno de Xochimilco para obtener esto. So right now, we're going to harvest the water that fell on the roof of the house. And then what we're doing is connecting tubes that are channeling the water from the roof and bringing them here towards this water tank that we just put in. So first, the water is going to come into this blue thing here. This is a first flush system. Every time it rains, the first maybe 10 minutes of the rain event, the water is going to be uh, dissolving smog, and it's also going to be washing uh, dust and things off of the roof. After that has sealed, water will start going into the tank. Yeah. And that water, they're still going to use it. No, They're going to use it for toilets, they're going to use it for watering their plants, right. okay. but they're going to use it for things that don't need such high water quality. And then the, the tank will fill up with the water that falls after that, which is going to be your cleaner water. The tiny municipality of San Gregorio is experiencing the crisis firsthand. They've had enough of paying for wells that kept drying up. They're now trying very hard with their very limited budget to make miracles happen. So they decided to pay for Isla Urbana's systems for the whole neighborhood. This one here will give Lauro's family five to six months of full autonomy a year with this one simple tank. And they could eventually become fully autonomous year round by burying a cistern in the ground. Having the tools to be fully water autonomous is the difference between being naked in the storm mm. and being equipped for it. And that's what this project is all about. 